Welcome to another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles, where we are better together than separated. We have Coach Marshall back with us again, and he have his beautiful wife that he brought in this time. How y'all doing out there? Hey, hey, yeah. what's up, Yacht? How you doing? Thanks for having man, me. I'm doing good, man. And like I say, you know, this was um, anticipated. You know, um, this is a show I wanted to do, talking about love languages, talk about the weakness in relationships, the weakness in marriages, talk about what is it going to take to bring marriages back together, what is it going to take to get to each other's love languages, what is it going to take for us to communicate mm -hmm. the right way with each other. Right. So I wanted to bring two people in today that's been married for a while, that's um, that's real successful in their marriage, and 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 they're entrepreneurs as well within within inside their marriage. You know, a lot of times when we try to do things with our partner in business, sometimes the fabric of the relationship is not right. Mm -hmm. You know, so we want to talk to Coach Marshall and and Miss Marshall about just. Just, just knitting that fabric the right way as to where, mm -hmm. you know, we can be, we can love each other, reach each other, love languages, you know, and not not fill up the courthouse <laughs> with divorces, right. and, 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 you know, and, and, and not being, try to bring relationships back together. Mm -hmm. So um, for the ones that don't know you out there, um, you want to introduce who you are? Yep. Um, like you said, I'm Kevin, known in Saginaw as Coach Marshall. This is my lovely wife, Joya. Uh, we've been together 32 years, married 28 years. Yeah, right. I got it right. <laughs> and been married 32 years. And we've been together you've been, 30. You've been married 28 years and been together for yeah. 32. Yep. yep. Wow. That's a, that, and that's a lifetime. That's yeah. a lifetime. That's a li and I know y'all know the ins and outs of each other. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? So when was, when was, I guess I'll start off and I'll say, can you tell us a little bit about your journey? as a couple you know and 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 like did y'all meet each other in high school <laughs> no. was, how, how did y'all meet we, go ahead go I'm gonna let, no i'm gonna let you handle this part <laughs> <laughs> we met actually at i'm from flint i was born and raised in flint graduated from flint and um we had a club called copa the copa <laughs> and uh him and his friends was there and they were up on the balcony, I guess, watching over, lurking at the women. <laughs> and, we <were> the, <laughs> and we were on the, me and my girls, we were on the dance floor. And I looked up and I saw him. So I went upstairs with my girls and I, I approached him and um, mm -hmm. we exchanged numbers and been history since mm -hmm. he called me the and, that's, and that's strange and, and that's and that's it's and that's like one of the that's like uh it seemed like it's so obsolete now what you just did mm -hmm. you know you seen a guy that was attractive to you that you like and mm -hmm. you went up there and you know presented yourself to him Right. In the world that we live in now, girls are just like, I, I ain't going to talk to him. If he want to talk to me, he, he better come over here and talk to me. Yes. What do you think? Like, how did, like, where do you think that attitude from when you met Coach Marshall and the attitude with women and 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 and, and that egotistical attitude, like, where, where, where did that turn come in at? You know, it's it's like the the our generation... And this generation now is so totally different. It's it's like um, they are, I want to say, pr like privilege, or they think they are supposed to. So instead of you seeing an attractive guy and, and approaching him, you feel like, well, I'm entitled, so he needs to come to me. Which you can have an attitude of, you know, I, I know that I am a prize, but there's nothing wrong with approaching someone if you see that you are attracted to someone but nowadays it's just like you got to come to me and you gotta this is you know about me you know and it's just it's different it's so totally different i didn't second guess when i seen him on the balcony i just told my girl i'm like let's go up there because i want to see who he is like so i went up there <laughs> and i think that's what we missing like you know getting to meet a person like that organic um mm -hmm. genuine love and friendship mm -hmm. you know because 
because in that aspect, you know, <clears throat> it's not nothing is expected. Um, nothing is being um, uh, lobbied. Um, there's no, there's no, there's no expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not looking for him to do this for me. I'm not looking for her to do that for me. You know, we met on, on, on genuine basis and that's that. And it seemed like now today it's about what you can do for me, how mm -hmm. you can provide for me, what kind of chain you can buy me, what kind of Louis Vuitton bottoms you can buy me, red bottoms, um, what kind of car you can buy me. It seemed like, you know, we a long way from when you and Coach Marshall first met. Yeah, yeah. the Big times time. have changed a lot. I mean, it has. It's it's changed. You know how you used to be on the phone all day, don't want to hang up with each other and talking right. on the phone all night. Now these times have changed. They don't. They'll they'll never get that. You know, they'll never appreciate that of getting to know somebody talking on the phone for hours and. They'll never, you know, it's just. Different. And I think that's how I think that's how how we become incompatible with a mate mm -hmm. is that, you know, you jumping in it because you need you jumping in it for a necessity. Right. Yeah. You right. know, and and what happened is that you get it, you get you get combined with the wrong mate. Mm -hmm. You know, you unite a person for your own survival, which means that you unite them with a person because. You, you know, your bills is not paid. You need right. money. So you want to holler at this guy. And, you know, you might not have a car and, and this guy might need to holler at this woman. To uh -huh. you. you know, so it's it's so many, it's so many strings attached to now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, to the point where the organicness and the naturalness of relationships just have went out the door. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's, it's, like. It's, it's a superficial thing now. Um, back in the day, you could talk to somebody and like you said didn't have a car or whatever now it's a superficial thing when you look at somebody and you see that they have these things you're not getting to know them you're just looking at them at what they have and so okay i'm with him because he's paying my bills or he's doing this you're not getting to know him you're not getting to know the person true enough we're imperfect you know it's all not gonna always be good but what i'm saying is it's now they're not looking at within they're looking at the superficial part, how they dress, mm -hmm. how, what they drive in. The yeah. vanity of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and once all of that goes out the window, even, even sex, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people look towards people for sex. You know, we have good sex, but as soon as our foot hit the floor, we don't get along. We don't have anything in common. Our goals are not the same. We, 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 we silently live in our own hearts away from each other. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not sharing um, things that we've been through today, um, sharing any type of resources, you know. So it's just like, I'm just with you for this. But soon as this thing or this necessity that I'm with you for, once that starts to fade, then the relationship fades as well. Yeah, exactly. that's correct. You know, so, correct. And that's why I tell a lot of people all the time is that, if, if it's not built on true love, then it, it's not going to stand the test of time. It's like a sandcastle. Right. When you're trying to build a relationship or anything outside of love, you know, when when I, when the first time adversity strikes, it's going to knock it down. Right. Yeah. Because it's not a real relationship. It's a relationship built on the need. It's a relationship that's built on a necessity right. instead of genuine love and care. Right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's, that's Yeah, so what I wanted to ask y'all is that can both of y'all share with me what your primary love languages are and how you discovered them in the relationship? Mm -hmm. I like, guess. Like Coach Marshall, what's your primary love language for Miss Marshall? Miss Marshall, what's your primary love language for Coach Marshall? What are some of the things that you like for him to do? Um, I like the words of affirmation. I am. I'm a mm -hmm. communicator, so I love and that. And that's a big love language, words yeah. of affirmation. I love um, touch, and I also love, like I said, the communication thing. That That's big on me. Uh, communication is very big on me. Yeah. Touch is very, very big on, on it. Words of affirmation is very big. So, yeah, I love those things. But those were things that we had to, um, he had to learn, you know, to me, and I had to learn from, you know, to him to get 
to where we are now because um, love languages change. Hmm. The love language that I am into now and that I love is not the same as when we first started mm -hmm. dating mm -hmm. each other. You know, we were young. We, so it, it's, it, it changes. And as it changes, we have to, to know and learn each other. You know, it's, it's a constant thing of learning each other and learning each other's love language because they change. Yeah. And mine, it was a uh, respect, you know, grew up in the situations I've seen a lot of disrespect. So that was one that, that respect meant a lot to me, still mean a lot, you know, and then, um, that words of affirmation as well. They're encouraging, you know, always encouraging others, encouraging, getting encouraging words that just does something for you and touch too. You know, sometimes I'm like a big baby. I like when she grabbed my head and just, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So that, and, and, yeah. and you know, thinking about the generation now, man, because it, it, it makes you realize, it makes you understand the beauty of the marriage that you have looking at mm -hmm. today. You know, no, no one's affectionate. You don't see the walking and the holding of hands no more, the riding the bikes up the street and, you know, you don't see that affinity for each other no more, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, you know, people now are so tough in relationships, mm -hmm. you know, to the point where I don't know if they're either scared to show their affection or they're, I don't know, or they don't want this certain person, the other party to see too much that they love them or like them. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what it is, but, you know, to be able to, you know, have that affection in y'all love in y'all relationship is one of the biggest love languages mm -hmm. because that touch, that little rub right there, it, let, it lets me know that you know you love me. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody care. Yep, and I, I, I did a show with Bankroll G. Mm -hmm. Bankroll, shout out to Bankroll G. Just got married. Um, yeah, and Bankroll G was talking about how having a partner in your life gives you a longer life. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, when you have a, when you, when you love somebody, when you care for somebody, somebody rub your head, let you know everything going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Somebody's taking the time out to listen to you, mm -hmm. you know, versus not having that counterpart or that party to do any of that. So right. life becomes a little more stressful, right. yeah. you know, so, but when we have that partner, it's like a little bit of weight, a little bit of the world is lifted up off of us. Yep. Yeah. That's true. That is true. And, and I'm gonna be real with you, y'all. Like she said, we came a long way. Mm -hmm. Cause like you said, just said, I was that cat. I didn't want that affection. I ain't grew up like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I I grew up where it was like just me and me only. So I was selfish, spoiled. But then as time went on, and man, I guess I really do like this chick. I better start <laughs> doing this and doing that. And we grew, and I had to let that wall down. You know what I'm saying? And trust. Trust was probably the biggest thing in there, too, mm -hmm. you know, and like we tell everybody, even when we talk about it on our show, we're not the perfect couple. Mm -hmm. We had days I get on her nerves. She get on mine. Mm -hmm. You know, the part about I can come in down here in the studio. She can be upstairs and we can get away from each other. I can go to the gym and do something there. So, you know, we had to grow and learn from it, too, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about having that endurance within a relationship as to where y'all get tired of each other or, you know, y'all be mad at each other or whatever. It ain't no get out of you go over here and I go over here. It's, it's about working through it. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, you know, being able to work through that problem or whatever that situation is. Exactly. Yep, it is. Yeah. yeah. So how have understanding each other's love languages improved your communication and connection in your marriage? You always start. <laughs> <laughs> um with me with the love language of communication, uh, that was a big thing where uh, like he said, he had to learn how to communicate. So, and then because he didn't communicate like I wanted him to communicate, I had to learn how to compromise. Right. So I had to understand that okay, he's not used to communicating. I'm used to communicating and I was at him instead of us saying, okay, we got to find a way where we can come together and communicate. Now, 
like Kevin said, we're not perfect. So it don't always turn out always like that, but it's at a better place where we've learned our love language, where that communication, where if right now he don't feel like communicating right now, I've learned where I'm like, okay, I got to give him his space mm -hmm. so that we won't communicate the wrong words to each other. It won't be a um, something that we will regret mm -hmm. to say, you know, it, we argue it's, it's just, that's, you know, that's every couple. We're normal. Probably, you know, that's just <laughs> a normal thing. But it's not to the point where the communication is hurting each other. Mm -hmm. So then we I had to learn to step back and say, you know what? Let me get let me get him some time. Let him cool off. Let him think about it. And then <laughs> we'll come back and communicate with each other. So, it, you know, that that is a real, real big, big thing as far as relationship wise learning how to communicate with each other, but knowing those things that your significant other may not have at that moment. So let's just, let's step back and we, we going to give each other some space and then we'll come together and communicate this thing and figure, figure it out, you know? So. And that don't mean go find somebody else. Exactly. That mean, like you said, communicate right. this thing and figure, you know, because, it's about what you value, mm -hmm. you know, and you have a lot of people that's confused on a partner. They're confused on what they partner should look like, what kind of partner they want. They didn't been through several partners. Things didn't go right. So now they, they, they got, they got a lot of core beliefs that stick with them and it's hard for them to find that right individual. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to ask you is that what advice do you have for couples who may have different love languages and are trying and now are trying to bridge the gap on their relationship well, or marriage? I'm going to be honest. First off, it's like you said, you got to you got to know each other from the start. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know each other, learn to know it, to, to learn, know each other. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to come overnight. Right. You know, we was together probably three years before we got married. Mm -hmm. You know, we did wrong. We stayed together before we got married. You know, back in the days, grandmas and them didn't like that. <laughs> they called it shacking. <laughs> but we did, you know what I'm saying? And, but during that time, we learned, you know, because like I said, she was from Flint. I'm in Saginaw. You know, I ain't believe in long distance relationships. So we, we bit the bullet, got together, stayed with each other. She learned a lot of good and bad from me, and I learned the same with her. Mm -hmm. But we kept learning, we kept working. We had some counselors help us out, a couple yeah. pastors, and you know, some friends that was older, um, a couple cousins and aunts mm -hmm. that stepped up, gave us advice. You know what I'm saying? And we had to learn from that at that point. Yeah. So my biggest thing is to any couple, don't just rush into it. Yeah, you know, because like you they say, he, she, fine or whatever. Go, go learn and read that book before you go open it and just say, yeah, I'm going to buy it. Right. Go, go understand that book first. Because mm -hmm. right. so that's part of a lot of... Because the cover going to always look good. Yeah, yeah. the cover going to look good. That's yeah. how you said the BBLs, the... Yeah. You know, and, and that's what I was talking about, you know, and then, you know, me and Sheila was just talking about this on the podcast. I know she was just on your... Mm -hmm. Shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? And I followed up with her. Yes, and sir. that's what she was saying is that, you know, we build people up in our mind and right. because it's just like, it's just like, I go back in history. It goes back to when, when, when we had, uh, uh, Cleopatra, mm -hmm. when she would come down, uh, when she would come down the river and, yeah. and the general will make all the troops put their head to the ground. Mm -hmm. She wasn't a fine uh, a super good looking female, but it was just the 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 thought if I can have her, the way she showed a little cleavage, the way she might have dropped her little shoulder, the way she had the the fans. It, it's just the allure of things. Yeah. And, it's, and now the the world we live in now is people more infatuated with a, with the allure of how she looked, with the yeah. allure of how he looked, with the allure of what he has, and with the allure. Well. If I can have this person, I can have that too. Or mm -hmm. if I did, if I can have him, I can have this too. You mm -hmm. know, but it's just like you said, this person may be a rapist. Right. This person may be beating on you. This right. person may have a bad attitude. 
This right. person got demons that they can't get over. But right. you're just looking at the surface of things and looking at right. the allure of things, and right. you didn't read the book. So now what happened is you in the Machiavellian relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, that's the truth. And that's I think true. that's what's hurting a lot of relationships, especially with a lot of our young couples. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something we try to encourage, you know, get to know each other. You know, because I just seen, I think the summer we got married a long time ago. I think I was in nine weddings mm -hmm. that one summer. Yep, we the were. same summer we got married. Yep. And with the exception of one of my brothers losing his life, they got married. I think it's only one couple married from that group of that summer I got married with. You know, yeah, because right. yeah. yeah. everybody, you know, they, they, that moment, that day, everybody was, oh, I got to have it, got to have it. But then, like you said, when, stuff hit the fan are you both strong enough to withstand it you know or are you gonna let her infiltrate you or him infiltrate you and talk bad about your partner and separate or are y'all gonna stand tall put that shield up you know because we've been through it mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you know we've been through it brother than fail you know yeah. what I'm saying? had to get back up fight for what was mine and the thing was is that you know, I had to make that commitment. And I remember that promise that when we first talked with our pastor and he made a told me about something about you ever broke a promise to God. And I looked at him and said, Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. And he said, well, you know, when you say you want to marry this woman, that's a commitment and a promise you're making to him. Mm -hmm. I never knew what that meant until I messed up and broke that promise. Got sick as a dog, bro. Talking about had a mini stroke, everything. Mm. And out of all that, when it came through, she was the one standing right there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So right then and there, it showed me you got the right one. What you mm -hmm. doing? Take care of your business. Right. Since then, man, we've been working and grinding, staying strong. And don't nobody want to, don't nobody want to die alone. Mm. Don't nobody want to grow old alone. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care how much money you have, how much materialistic things that you have. There's nothing like having a partner that's genuine, that love you, that support mm -hmm. you, and that care for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, and, and and I was listening at you, and I listened at y'all when y'all was talking about um, um, podcaster Mr. and Ms. Epperson. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they said that has continued their journey and their marriage for so long was keeping family and friends out of their business man all day yeah. Look, how I'll important is that man you so know it seems like you know every time uh something go on in the relationship i gotta get on the phone call my friend you gotta get on the phone call we yeah. call them family members now everybody know our business mm -hmm. then everybody they say you know we just made up but here it is our family and friends still in the up world because of because we called them and put them in our business you know, yep. so how important is that, man, to be able to keep you bi your business at home and not in your friends and family here? Man, I'm going to say on our end, it's real big. Mm -hmm. I, I personally fell away from family members because of that. You know, and I've seen certain family members wrap their arms around some of my sibling, you know, significant others. And, man, after a while, they, they didn't last. So... Like I said, I grew up basically on my own. You know, I had an aunt that raised me and kept me in line, but I grew up different. So I always knew what's mine is mine. That's just how I look at things. And, you know, and I just knew, okay, if it's me and her, you know, hey, we got to work it out. And I mean, we've been at the bottom and we worked that way, you know, from walking 10 miles to work, no car, to working and saving our money, doing what we had to do to get that transportation. Y'all was walking 10 miles to work together. Man, she was working at the time. Mm, I would walk her. Yep. Bro, I stayed in BV, and I walk all the way to Ansley. And, no, not Ansley. It actually, was Genesee. Yeah, it was Genesee. The old, the, um, you know that door. market right across the street from it's the- Dollar General now. Yeah, it's Dollar General now. DNY. DNY, that's the name. I knew it was around. She, we stayed in BV, bro, and I used to walk her every day. You know, then my boy be home, then I go pick her up from work you know, in the dark, but I would walk to work every day. You know, that was just some of the little things we did, yeah. but we kept people out of 
Like, why y'all don't ask us? Oh, we good. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is my thing. I got to do what I got to do as a man. And yeah. we made it happen, bro. Yeah. But I just, I think that's the biggest thing. And like I said, bro, I just seen a lot of couples fall apart, man, because of friends or family involved in their relationship. Don't get me wrong. I love my family. But if I come to you, then I'll bring it to you. But other than that, don't we good? You know, we got God and we're going to be all right. That's, That's how I look at for real. That's what's up. I wanted to ask you because I wanted to kind of talk about you guys' podcast and the entrepreneurship that you guys are going on inside your marriage. Um, why do you why do you guys think there's so many marriages and relationships breaking up these days? Okay. I um feel like people are all about the wedding. Hmm. It's all about I got this big wedding. Um, big wedding party. We got this. We had so much fun at the reception. It's all about the wedding. And then after the glitz and the glamour is all gone and you have to work for it because you have to work on your marriage. This is that's an everyday thing. It's like you don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times social me- social media will frown upon people that celebrates their marriage. Mm -hmm. It's nothing wrong with shouting out your husband. It's nothing wrong with shouting out your wife or, or showing a picture or whatever. Does that mean that they're perfect? No, that's not saying just because I, me and him went on a date and we put it on there. Oh, their marriage is so perfect there. No, that's (laughs) not it. We're just celebrating each other and it's okay to do that. A lot of times communication fails when it gets rough instead of communicating it or working it out. You just want to leave each other alone or you married and you out here dipping and dabbing in the streets, doing other things or entertaining other people. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's so many things that uh, I feel like is destroying marriages because people are not taking marriage as serious as they should take marriage as serious. They are looking at it as it's just something that they did. It was just something we did that day and we celebrated and, you know, it's rough. It's hard. And oh, I'm not going for that or uh, I'm going to leave or I'm, you know, it's it's not what we're going to work. And, then, and the thing about that, not to cut you off, oh, no, it seemed like at the first strike of adversity, the grass is greener on the other side. I can go over here. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it's it's why. Why do you think the grass is greener on the other side? You're going to go over there and the same thing is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be green for a minute because that's what they want to get you in. But once you in, you're going to go probably go through the same thing or worse over there. So water your water your grass where you at. Build your your marriage up. Work it out. If you have to seek out counseling, seek out counseling. If you have to do different things to start over, I always say redate each other again. Get to know each other again. You know, do things that you fell in love with this person for. Right. With You know, do those right. things. Right. And um, I know being in a relationship at times, things can kind of like a person feel like, okay, well, you know, you've been with a person for y'all have been together, married 28 years, 32 years. And person feel like, man, they ain't tired of each other yet. Man, they ain't got to the point where they exhausted of each other yet. So, and I tell a lot of people this. If you and your your partner are not doing anything, if you and your partner not have some type of drive, some type of purpose, then you might get tired of each other. But when you know how to network together, you can create podcasts together like you guys do it, um, get in the public and associate with different people. Now it gives the relationship some, something else to be stimulated by instead of just being bored with right. each other. Right. You know, we sitting on the couch, we watching movies, uh, we might go on a date night. You know, it's after about 10, 12 years, it get tired of that. So now it's, we got to do something else that's stimulating. And one thing that you guys did was you guys came up with your own podcast. Like, tell us a little bit about that and how 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 that came about. Man, yeah, I can take over there. I was down downstairs where we are, and I, I was working on my own podcast. And 
you know, and sometimes when I'm sitting in the dark and doing things, man, God talked to me. And he said, stop. Go get your wife and ask her to be a, do a podcast. People you know, a lot of people you know, got relationship problems. Go help others. So I went upstairs and I asked him, I was like, hey, you want to do a podcast with me? I don't want to do no podcast. <laughs> I said, why not? She's like, because I don't want everybody in our business. I said, <laughs> I said, but with me and you being transparent about how we came from the bottom to where we at, we can help other people that are struggling. Mm -hmm. And she was like, well, then I said, well, God told me that I got to come and ask you to do it. I stopped doing more than the coach to come do this. And she was like, well, let's give it a shot. So I brought it down in the studio, man, and we did a little trial run. I got to, I'm going to get it for you so you can hear. She started rapping at the beginning of it. She didn't know I was recording at the time, you know. And ever since then, man, it uh, it took off, bro. Uh -huh. You know, and we're getting a lot of good feedback from it, man. We get questions. She got the little Miss G goodie bag where people are asking questions, man. We got a powerful question for this weekend that we got to, you know, I put it out there, but we're going to uh, talk about it, man. And, you know, it's just, it's been a blessing, bro. Yeah. You know? And it's helping us, like you said, keep yeah, communication open. Us. Then right. when we public, people see us. I love the podcast. Hey, you know, that that make you keep on wanting to do it. Like when exactly they be like, man, I'll be watching Yacht Life Chronicles. That motivates you, man. Yeah. So, so I wanted to ask you guys. You know, because running a podcast as a married couple must have its unique challenges and rewards. Like, can you share some of the highs and the lows you didn't experience since the first time that you showed her how to podcast? Like, like, give me, yeah, like, give me, give me one of the highs and one of the lows that you guys had. You do the high, I do the low. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, let's see the high. Um, I'm gonna say just us doing it together i, I want to say uh sharing something with each other um and and putting it out there um mm -hmm. like a positive spin on a marriage um i feel like that's kind of a, that's that's a high for you know for me um just being able to share this platform with my husband um i feel like that's that's one of you think that's one of mm -hmm. the highs um mm -hmm. i do i do believe that mm -hmm. uh you know just, I guess, sharing it with you yeah. and, you know, experiencing it and also learning it. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm still learning, too, with you Yeah, and you're learning with me. So I feel like that's a high. Yeah. Like and, and I think one of the lows is I think when we first started, it was going good. But then some reason, like we said, we human. Yeah. We hit that wall. Yeah. First thing I she holler. That's it. We done with the podcasting. Yeah. It's <laughs> Guess what? Throw it out the window. <laughs> it's a, a simple argument. So what I do, bro, I go and, hey, we'll be back in two weeks. <laughs> and we took a break. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but we took that break yeah. so we can get back on track. So we can get back. Yeah. We, you know, I don't know what it was. Probably something stupid too. Yeah. You know, she gonna yeah, say. And I think that. I so and I think that you guys have to, you know, as podcasters, we are podcasters. We have to. Life is our fuel, mm -hmm. you know. We got to get that gas from the people. We got to get those experiences in life in order to make good conversation on these podcasts and to be able to give some direction with life, relationships, or yeah. whatever whatever our segment is at the time. So I tell the people, I tell a lot of people that do the podcast, make sure you live some too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, don't let the podcast run you down in the ground because you'll be yeah. chasing guests and, you know, you know, worried about putting the show together, this and that. And that's all to your life and you're not doing no living. And it's supposed to be fun at the same time. And I always tell him, too, like, when we hit that wall and we was off of, it was a month. Wasn't it, wasn't it about a month? Mm -hmm. When we hit that wall, I told him, I, I was like, no, we got to get it together within right here first. And then we can present ourselves to the podcast because I never want to be, I would never want us to present ourselves as we this couple that is telling other people 
these gems and opinions or whatever. And then we're not doing it behind closed doors. So I ne we never want to say, well, you got to communicate, you know, communication is the most important thing, but then our communication is sucking right now. And we not, we hitting each, you know, our bumping heads and stuff. I never, I never wanted to present that. I don't want to get on here and it's, I guess be fake about it. Right. So if we're presenting, you want to make sure you were living it. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So if we're presenting our lives and we we're letting people into our lives and being as transparent as we can, then I'm not gonna get on the podcast and I know that we're not getting along. We're mm -hmm. not communicating like we should, and we need to figure out what's going on with us first. And mm -hmm. then when we get that together, then we'll come back to you and we can share a little bit about it, you know, to right. you guys help you guys if you hit that wall like we did. So yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that that wall got to be hit. You mm -hmm. know, we got to experience that that failure mm -hmm. because we got to know how to get back up. We got to know how to brush ourselves off and start over again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and keep trying. And the more you keep trying, the better you're going to get. Yeah. Yep. And you That's have it. to remember, you're not perfect. We're not a perfect couple. Nobody's perfect on mm -hmm. this earth. We're not perfect. So you have to remember that we are just two imperfect people. Like <laughs> I always say, we're two imperfect people that just chose to fight for our marriage. Mm. Our marriage is not like everybody else's marriage, but we chose to fight for ours. So, you know, we're not perfect. We're going to hit that wall. We're going to, you know, bump heads or whatever. So, yeah, that's very important to 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 be as transparent as you can, but to also show the realness also. <laughs> it, it's just... That's that's life and how we right. Have, yeah, know. gotta be genuine. Yeah. yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. So communication is often cited as a key factor in a successful marriage. How has running a podcast together improved your communication skills as a couple? When we I know uh, y'all do a lot of talking together. Yeah, <laughs> asking yeah. questions and everything. Like that's that. cool though, because you know we communicate about the podcast, mm -hmm. the guest, or if it's just us, mm -hmm. topics, what we're gonna talk about. So that gives us a chance to communicate with each other too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I would be at work and I'm sitting here, I'm you know jotting down and got like three or four different podcast episodes already ready to go and everything. Bring it back to her. Well, I don't want to do it this way. So you know why then we get it together but we'll figure it out but that communication piece is real important yeah. and just having a podcast man it's it just it, like you said it helped me communicate better yeah. i'll be honest with you because i was one of them guys that kept everything inside you know the more than the coach bought a little bit of it out but then having the mr and mrs marshall podcast even open up and seen a different side where you know most people had coach marshall here butthole I don't like Coach Marshall, yada, 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 but okay, what yeah. else? But now then I get kids coming to me. Like today I was at workout. My mama listened to your podcast with you and your wife. <laughs> My mama said, you got another podcast. You talk about sports. <laughs> so it's just little stuff like that. So yeah. it's helping, like me and you talked that one day, man. It's kind of like we did as the new media for Saginaw. Yeah. You know, us and other podcasters in our city. Yeah. And we bring stuff to people and like what you touch on, you how you reach different avenues. And, you know, and I never say I'm going to go that route because my boy Yacht got that. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, we be what well, we be doing, and you be like, you got it. You know, mm -hmm. so, so like I was it's all, and I And I love the different nuances of all yeah. our podcasts. Man. They're all totally different. Yep, and I'm seeing a lot, man. And I know Chucky going to reach out to you because he called me today, and me and you and him going to sit down and – Hash out a couple things. So, oh yeah, yeah, he called me before he called you. So there you go. So uh, yeah, so you know, we got some, we got something coming up, man. Yeah, really important that we'll be telling you guys soon. Yep, and that's what I was saying. It's more communication, man. It's just, it's, it's a blessing, man. It's a gift. I ain't gonna call it a curse because I'm loving it. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I tell everybody when I'm done coaching, I'm gonna be podcasting full time. For real. It, it's just being able to understand your callings in life. Yeah, that's it. Too. You know, and, and, and sometimes you have to, you know, work on your calling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to make a calling for yourself, you know. Yep. And I mean, you know, because, you know, we all want to be successful in life. And I ain't mean like materialistic things mm -hmm. or money. 
but we just want to be successful in whatever we're doing. And that's just being happy with what we're doing, everything going great. Everybody around us is happy and we bringing people to the platform that's br bringing productivity. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. True. So can you share some of your memorable moments or episodes from your podcast mm -hmm. that have had a significant, significant impact on your relationship or your listeners? Yeah. That episode when we shared about um, when we went through the infidelity thing. Mm. Oh that yeah, was, that was a uh, yeah. We had a guest. That was a hard episode, yeah, but it was also um, healing. Yeah, it was all, it was um, very transparent, mm. but it was healing. Yeah, um, it was hard, but we got through it. We got through it, and it was worth it. You know. Yeah. I, so in our first episode, you know, we asked people, you know, if you got a question for us, send us some stuff in. So we did, and then this guy hit me up, was like, hey, can y'all talk to us about um, infidelity in a relationship? So instantly, we both stopped, because like I said, we went through that crap. And man, it took us a whole month yeah, before, we, yeah. before we finally sat down and said, you know what, we prayed on it, yeah. let's do it. Because yeah. he kept hitting me up too, like, when y'all gonna talk about it? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, we gonna get to it, bro, we gonna get to it. But that was one of those topics that at one point we was like, mm, we ain't want to touch at the time. And because we it was a sensitive topic for y'all. Yeah. And we didn't know if we wanted to open that up yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And sure enough, bro, we we went through it. We had a we had a powerful show. And that that was real impactful, that one. And it was one other one. And this was just not too long ago where we had a guest talking about he was he was loving his wife, but he didn't feel the same love back, mm -hmm. and he was ready to leave, bro. He was mm -hmm. talking about even doing our show, mm -hmm. you know, and we we giving him input and advice. The other guest that was in the chat was giving him advice, but, you know, I mean, to this day, he's still in there because I talked to him, mm -hmm. but you know, they still got a lot of problems where, you know, as a brother, he was incarcerated. She come, you know, wife thinking she a little bit better than him and everything. And, you know, and, you know, and I mean, he's doing well for herself. So it was just a lot. But that was a real impactful mm -hmm. podcast we had, too. And this one we just had like two weeks ago. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that was that was another powerful. One. So me and that listener, we still communicate because I still try to give him advice and help him out. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So balancing personal life and podcasting can be challenging. How do you manage your time effectively to ensure your marriage remains a priority while also growing your podcast? Hmm. Uh, I, I always say um, date date night is very important to me. Um, so um, we our podcast is on Sundays. Uh, during the week is work. Um, and he's coaching and, you know, we got the grandkids. And so we have to take that time for ourselves between each other to reconnect, get back to us and then, you know, present ourselves on, on the podcast. So I feel mm -hmm. like that right there, because life be life and it's not going to stop. You know, you have to work, you know, you have the grandbabies, you have different things that's going on in your life. You have health you know, problems and things. And so you have to take that time out to do the date night where it be out or in, but as long as we reconnect with one another so we can come back and, re you know, present ourselves on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I feel that's very, very important. Yep. And that's right. what it is too, bro. It's just about scheduling, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'll, you know, it's probably a little bit more on me because like I said, with me and Joyous is once a week, Mm -hmm. But then on when I flip it and go to more than the coach, I got Tuesday and Thursday nights, you know, on top of work and basketball. And yeah. so it's a little challenging. But like you said earlier, it's I had to find that time when I got to sit back and say, hey, do for you, do you yeah. like this week? I don't have a podcast. I might do my more uh, sports recap. Just talk about, you know, how bad my Cowboys look. <laughs> but um, man, uh, San Francisco did them boys bad, man. <laughs> 
And I've been getting drug online about it. Too, act like he ain't got no feet under. I want to. I, I want to send him a message personally. You know what I'm saying? Got me looking like a fool around her. As that one comedian say, trash. That's what it is for real. But you know, it's just about finding that right time, man. And then, like you said, instead of getting overwhelming, just take a step back and say, "Hey, it's my podcast. I can put it on when I want to." There so, you have. And that's you what know, I know because we put ourselves up under a lot of pressure sometimes, yeah. and we gotta we have to remind ourselves, like you know, to still have fun and enjoy life. That's right. Yeah, what's important, you know, you have to to really realize what what's important. You know, mm-hmm. is your marriage important or is your coaching important? Like we had said to each other, especially when he was doing the he was coaching football and basketball, <laughs> stayed in the gym, stayed on the field. But we, I told him, I went to him when he accepted both positions as varsity and he had to, you know, he was ahead of both those programs. I was like, just promise me that you will take the time. We will take the time out for each other because you are working. You're coaching football. You're doing workouts until basketball. Then you're doing basketball. So we have to take the time out for each other. So what we started doing was when he, a football game or whatever, on a Friday or whatever, we'll go out after the football game and we'll go to dinner or something, or we'll go to the movies, basketball. Like now we, we still do that now with basketball. It could be late. It could be 11 o'clock at night after the basketball game. And we'll go somewhere if something is open and we'll go eat. And just so that when we can talk about, you know, or you know, the whole week has been so busy and we'll, you know, get back to each other. So it's so right. important to put your priorities. Strength, study strengthening that bond. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it's so yeah. It's very important. That's yeah, true. yeah. So how do you handle disagreements or the difference of opinions when it comes to the content and direction of y'all podcast? You know, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, yeah, For the most good. part, well, there's a couple I wanted to bring some guests on you. Like, no, it's just oh. So, you know, a woman, I let her win. You know, <laughs> if she say no, bro, I'm going to be like, okay. And then later on, I do the podcast she want to do, but then I slide them back in again. You know, <laughs> let's do it, you know, because that's why I, I kind of want to like venture into this second season we got going. You know, the first season was really about us. You know, I think we had the ball ones on mm-hmm. the first season. Mm-hmm. And um this yeah, season, no, no, that's Everson's this season. Was, yep. yeah, this season. So yeah. this season, I wanted to do more couple and relationships, mm-hmm. you know, bring people on. Like we got one coming with a young couple that's they're not married, but they're under 25 years old, but they've been together like they're a married couple. Yeah, they have. You know, okay. I'm still trying to find um a couple that's that was married, now they divorced, but they still friends. I want I want to talk to them because I think they got something to bring to you know mm-hmm. a relationship for people. How y'all get still get along and y'all divorce? Mm-hmm. You know? Exactly. So still that could be friends after everybody else be yeah. enemies when they break up. Exactly. Yeah. You know. I don't even want to be your friend. You nothing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but so it's little stuff like that. So then when it come to the when it come to the content, man, we we talk about it, mm-hmm. and you know, but she kind of like give me the free reign. And then I get the nod and hey, I run with it. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm I'm learning from him. So, yeah. you know, I usually he'll bring something to me and I'll be like, yeah. And then I'll bounce off an idea. But I'm learning a lot from him <laughs> uh, with this podcast because I didn't really know anything about the podcast at all, honestly. And mm-hmm. then when he started doing it and with uh was it more than the coach mm-hmm. right and um i'm like you got something you know but i still was not really interested in like being <laughs> on a podcast i'm like yeah, you got right it. you got it you know but um i learn a lot from him so usually he he doesn't make the decision like um okay this is what we are gonna do he doesn't do that he'll be like well this is what i thought of or and then i'll be like okay well, and that's how we do that so it's not like one person is just like okay we're gonna do this no we we communicate that and talk about it so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what are what are your future plans or goals 
that you have for your podcast and how do you see it evolving alongside your marriage? Yeah. We got we got one I'll mm -hmm. tell you off air. I ain't going <laughs> to say it on air, but we got something special planned. Yeah. And I can't wait for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying because it's going to be big. And he couples. probably can help us. Yeah, we yeah. we going to get together and mm -hmm. talk about it. Yeah. Cuz okay. it's something that we want to do and it's dear to me. Mm -hmm. But and I got to do it cuz I know it's couples out here that need to like talking with the Eppersons, going to the couple ball. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's going to be something powerful. But All right. we're going to, we got some things that we want to do, man, to just continue. Like the next step is going to be a book. Mm -hmm. She's a journalist. She loves to write. You know, I do the audio part. She could do the writing part. But we want to talk about just strengthening our marriage by still helping the others. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And going through. <laughs> It's it's always like what your motto is, man. We better right. together than separated. Yeah, you know, we man. definitely are. And that's what we're gonna try to do, continue to build and grow from it. And hopefully my goal is to get a big studio where we can have couples come in, whether they couples or not, singles, I don't care. You wanna come in, you wanna talk, give people a platform to come and speak their voice. On some people might like, why are they not married or why are they against marriage? Mm -hmm. I want it. I want it all. I want to know, you know what I'm saying? Because somebody you gonna help in yeah. that in that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely is. Yeah. So, is there anybody that you guys want to shout out, man? That like helped you guys along on this journey, man, through your marriage, man? Gave you any kind of counseling? Uh, <laughs> somebody that inspired y'all? Y'all want to give them a shout out? Man, go ahead. I'm gonna let you go. I know go where you're gonna go. Go ahead. Who I'm gonna shout out? We got to give a big shout out to my best friend, mother, Marilyn Goodman. Yep. Um, yep. I'll tell you this. Our first week of being married, we was both ready to pack our bags up and go the whole different way. Mm -hmm. That first, the first week of our marriage was straight hell. Mm -hmm. You know, because once again, you got selfish me. And we who, were young. And we were young. We were young. And it's like, and I mature. wanted to do what my boy's doing. Yeah. But now I got a wife. So Miss Marilyn Goodman, um, man, she set us straight. Yeah. I mean, sometimes she used some way. strong words against both of us, mm -hmm. but we call her Ma, and she helped us, man. And um, yep. I got a cousin Tanya Akins, yep, Katrina Spiller, and Terrence, Terrence Spiller, and Jody Nunn. Mm -hmm. And he he probably wouldn't want me to say his name, but Andre Wharton. So these were people that helped us big time in our marriage and angela and her, my best, yep, friend, her angela. best friend yep so we definitely get them a shot and give our kids a shot yeah because our kids our they've been there with us through thick and thin yep. whether right. she was wrong or i was wrong our kids supported and you know they was the real glue behind me and her still being together today and we always got to give a shout out to uh pastor tyrus and his wife um, yeah. darlene simpson uh, co-pastor Darlene yep, Simpson we went with them because too. they um was they did our marriage counseling when we mm -hmm. were going through mm -hmm. what we were going through and uh they were we all we always appreciate them because they were so real with us and raw mm -hmm. with us right and a lot of times you go into these marriage counselings and they're telling you things that you want to hear but no they were raw with us like yeah. they were so super real with us and they they got us together too so i always mm -hmm. i always thank them and always say they are a part of why we are still together and still god too bro yeah god always. i gotta be real <laughs> you gotta Cause. shout out <laughs> hey because we had to yeah you gotta shout right. out. <laughs> like i say it's a pleasure man it's a beautiful thing man to have a partner man that you can be on the same journey with same on the entrepreneurial race with him, like yes. for all couples out there, any couples out there, man, that's on an entre entrepreneurial path together. We want to shout you out. Yes. You know, we want to shout out Mr. and Miss Coach Marshall podcast mm -hmm. and what you guys doing. We want to wish you much, much, much prosperity, man, on y'all journey, man. Y'all have a beautiful situation going on over there. Thank you, bro. you know. And, and and like I say, I just wish you nothing but prosperity. I wish you guys nothing but happiness. And just keep 
understanding each other's love language to get yeah. you that much further down the line. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and for you guys out there as well, you know, you got to communicate well. You got to show affection. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to show care. You have to show love. You know, sometimes your partner may be difficult to deal with. And, yeah. and, and like Miss Marshall said, you know, she had to be patient and wait. You know, she had to understand Coach Marshall's the coach. She had to understand Coach Marshall's love language, mm -hmm. but she was not willing to just leave and go see what the grass was like on the other side. She right. was willing to stick it out. She was willing to, to to have endurance. You know what I'm saying? To 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 have the strength to wait on what she knew was her future. Yeah. You know, which was her husband. You know, and and, and, and and that's what we got to get back to. We got to have more patience in relationships. We got to have more understanding and we got to be able to compromise a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very yeah. important. Everything you said is that that's so very important. Hmm. That is so important because if you don't have those things, then what, what are you working on? What are you working for? If you don't exactly. have, those, you know, so that's so very important. And exactly. we appreciate you. Thank you so much for having us exactly. on. We appreciate you. We Man, and I definitely appreciate you. And you. Right. And make sure you guys get out your Instagram and make sure you tell, tell them what nice to tune in so they can catch the podcast. Oh, yeah. You can um, follow Mr. and Mrs. Marshall podcast on YouTube. We got a Facebook page as well, but you can also watch us every Sunday night live on YouTube. Um, and then on Instagram is Mr. and Mrs. Marshall Podcast at eight o'clock. At eight o'clock, yep. All mm -hmm. right, and Sunday. there you have it. And there yes. you have it, man. We want to thank Mr. and Miss Marshall for this interview. Wonderful interview. Well, 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 it was well anticipated. Oh, you yeah. Know, we hope that you got some. Um, hope that anybody out there watching, we hope that you got some substance. We hope that you got some edification, some knowledge out of this. You know, as to where it can make your relationship better, your marriage better, you know. And like I said, you have that endurance just to stick with your mate and not give up so fast. Yeah. We got relationships ruining every day. Marriage is ruining every day. The courthouse is packed with divorces, relationships breaking up, you know. And just be able to have that somebody that you love, somebody that you care for, to have mm -hmm. that direction with, it's nothing like it. You right. know what I'm saying? To build a life with, you know what I'm saying? To build an entrepreneurial path with. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's sure. amazing. Yeah. You know, so I want to shout out to you and thank you guys for allowing me to do this interview. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you and I want to Yeah. You say it again. I said thank you for having us. Man, no doubt, man. You know we'll be doing it again. Oh, yeah. You know, and I want to thank you out there for tuning in to this podcast and, um, Thank you guys for tuning in again, and we want to wish you a wonderful day. And like I said, you know, whatever, you know, just make sure that you and your partner grow together. You mm -hmm. and your partner be able to love on each other, to care on each other, and support each other as much as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, so we want to wish you guys a, 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 a happy journey. We want to wish you guys much prosperity. So thank you for tuning in to another edition of Yacht Life Chronicles, where... We are better together than separate. Thank you guys for tuning in. All right. In. Have a good night. All right, no.